the Search Warps Tech Talk. It's Monday, October 19th, 2009, and my name is Bruce Hurst. I'm the chief web developer at the writer's community at searchwarp.com, and I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location in Houston, Texas. This is technically the very first time I've recorded a podcast. Last week, we actually recorded three podcasts, and somebody forgot to hit the record button. I have two of my friends here in our virtual studio. First, from Houston, Texas, I have Danny Davids. Danny's been a friend of mine for years and years and is married to Search Warp editor Lori Davids. Danny is an IT manager for the city of Houston. He's also a pet lover and manages MyPetTale.com. That's MyPetTale.com. How are you doing today, Danny? Doing just fine. Next, from South Scotland in the United Kingdom, we have Connor Davidson. Connor's a full-time student studying math and physics and he refers to himself as a man of science. Connor's writing a book with Cameron Holm called The Granny's Guide to Science. How are you today, Connor? I'm fine. Okay, uh, today's topic is book publishers mull over changes to the publishing industry. I read a report on Reuters. The world's book trade meets in Frankfurt, Germany this week on the brink of a long-feared transformation of the industry for which few are well prepared. Electronic reading devices like Amazon's Kindle are set to enter the mass market, starting with a surge in sales this Christmas holiday season, helped by lower prices, rising consumer confidence, and a better distribution outside the United States. Like the music and newspaper industries before it, the book publishing world now faces vanishing revenues as sales of physical discs, papers, and books give way to far cheaper or free digital distribution. Meantime, publishers are distracting themselves by fretting over the price of e-books, withholding e-book releases so as not to cannibalize hardcover book sales, and watching helplessly as their businesses erode in front of them. Looking at this, I I know it affects search warp writers to some degree. A lot of them are aspiring writers hoping to be published someday. What do you guys think, what parallels can be drawn between the the book publishing industry and like the, uh, the music industry in the last decade or so? Danny, what do you see there? Well, I see that um, basically people are finding that their data is portable. Um, In the music industry, when you had vinyl, uh, it really you couldn't carry records albums around in a in a very comfortable way. So, with the advent of eight track and cassette, and then especially CD and MP3, suddenly you could carry your music around everywhere. I think the problem is that um, with especially with these last the last format, the MP3 and the CDs. You can copy these things. The technology exists so that I can sit down, make copies of my music, and put it on the devices that I play or share it with other people. And that's where the music industry flipped out and decided that suddenly you were buying an album. You weren't buying the actual song. You were buying a license to use the song, kind of what happens with software on your computer. And that's where all the legal arguments came, and that's when we saw people being taken to court for you know, stealing music and paying millions of dollars for nine songs that they downloaded for free off the Internet. Yeah, um, Napster. Exactly. I think what you're going to see is publishing companies are concerned about the same thing happening with their ebooks, and they need to look at what happened in the music industry and learn lessons from that so that they can go in and say, this is a good deal for the user, this is a good deal for the publishing company, and everybody benefits. They don't want to alienate people uh, in the in the book reading world uh, the way that the music companies did with uh, trying to basically sue folks for having music. Huh. Do you think that's going to be possible, that they're going to be able to move forward without alienating readers? They have to. Um, if, uh, if you read any of the articles on these folks who are being taken to court for obtaining music by without purchasing the songs or purchasing the licenses, uh, you'll see that there are a lot of folks who, who, you know, responded by saying, well, let me show you what I'm going to do, and um, ended up, you know, making their music available for even more people to get for nothing. Uh, yeah. there was, go, ahead, go ahead, Connor. All right. Um, the, I've, I have read two of them articles, and they always seem to be anti- the music industry, they're all very negative press over that whole thing. The, there was very few people when, when Napster went that said, oh, poor music industry, it was all, look how horrible these big bucks guys are. 
there try to steamroller everybody. Right. I mean, what does the music industry? What is the? They are the middleman. What do they add to it? They they take from the artists. They take from the musicians, and they mark it up. They distribute it, and then they sell it to the users. Well, what the internet has done, what this technology has done, is cut out the middleman, and that's the that was the the RIA, the the, the recording industry, and that's going to be these book publishers. So, um, you know, are 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 the book publishers' days numbered? Are they? Um, uh, have you seen Smashwords? That's one of the leading, well, one of the best royalty paying I've found for ebooks, and they pay the author. I think it's eighty five percent, according to the source I've got up here, of the sale price, um, which is pretty incredible considering uh, co conventionally published books through, for example, the Book Guild, they can give up to ten percent, and some of them even being less than that. And what's the what are the upfront costs to do a, a, a book tr the traditional way? I mean, the, you have a, a substantial outlay of money. Uh, if the publisher accepts you in the first place, and and you know if it's an electronic distribution, often it's free. They'll they'll take anyone. With with publishing as a, a book, there's usually three different main types of ways you can do it. Self publishing, where you pay all of the costs, <laughs> and you s more often than not have to self market. Then you have um, sponsored, which I'm not for. It sounds a bit dodgy. It's where the you pay the first edition of the book to be published. You pay all the costs, and the publisher will do the editing and will provide you with a bit of marketing. They'll use what they their distribution chains to sell your book, but then they'll take royalties. Um, they'll take a percentage of that from you even though you've paid the costs to print the books. Um, and then you've got conventional publishing, which is where the publisher pays all of the costs in their entirety. And you only... You just write to give them your work. Right. Um, but but with e-books, the, the great thing is there's, there's no big costs for the publisher, so the risks are much lower. If you imagine these publishers, say they print off a million copies and the book completely collapses, they, they go out to the stores, nobody wants to buy them, the publisher's losing millions of pounds, and for independent publishers, that, that could really, that could make some of these guys bust.